Okay, so you've just gone through reading this percent composition worksheet. One thing you should have noticed is the percent composition is typically referring to percent by mass. See right here we have two H's and one O, and you would think, oh, well, it's two-thirds or 66% hydrogen. But really, since the oxygen is so much bigger than the hydrogens by mass, most of the mass is the oxygen. Now, a percent is always the same thing. A percent is always part over the total times 100. Well, in this case, the percent that we're looking for is going to be the mass of one element. And the total is going to be the mass of the whole molecule. So another way to look at it is if you take the gram atomic mass of the element you're looking for and multiply it by how many atoms you have, that's your top number. And your bottom number is the mass of the whole thing. So when I showed you the water molecule down here, the percent water, percent hydrogen and water, since there's two H's, you take the gram atomic mass of hydrogen, two decimal places, multiply it by two, and you divide that by the whole thing. Now, there's a slightly different way you guys can look at this. One thing you could do is, what is the percent lithium and lithium-2 oxide? What you want to do is take the mass of both lithiums, divide it by the mass of the whole compound. There's your top number, the two lithiums. There's your bottom number, the two lithiums and the one oxygen together. And if you do that, then you're going to end up with the 46.5%. Then you went through and did these problems here. Hopefully you got these answers here. Hopefully you've talked to me about it if you had any problem with it. But I want to do a couple of practice problems for you. Let's take a look at this. The first one. What is the percent by mass of potassium in K2SO4? So what you want to do is you want to take the mass of the two Ks, put it over the mass of the whole thing, and then multiply it by 100. So we have two Ks, we have one S, and we have four Os. The two Ks are 2 times 39.10 grams per mole. I got that from the reference table. Sulfur is 32.07 grams per mole. And the four oxygens are, of course, 4 times 16.00 grams per mole. And that whole thing totals up to be 174.27 grams per mole. There's your bottom number. There's your total. Now, since we want the potassium, we're going to take the mass of both potassiums over the mass of the whole thing. So 172, oops, 174.27 over 39.10, 39.10, that's going to be 79.20. Multiply by 100, and you get 45.45%. So, in potassium sulfate, it's 45.45%. Next problem, what is the percent by mass of calcium and calcium iodide? Well, the first thing you got to do is figure out what's calcium iodide. So go back to the stuff we just learned. Calcium is plus 2, iodine is minus 1, so the formula is CaI2. So we're going to take the mass of the one calcium, divide it by the mass of the whole thing, times 100. So, one calcium is 40.08 grams per mole. Two iodines is 126.9 grams per mole times two, which is 253.8. So, on the 40.08, that's going to total up at 293.88.88 grams 
per mole. So now it's the mass of the calcium over the mass of the whole thing, the part over the total. And you get 40.08 divided by 293.88 times 100, which comes out to be 13.61%. Now, let's apply this a little bit. Let's say you've got a lump of calcium iodide, it's 50 grams of calcium iodide. How many grams of calcium is in this 50 gram mass? So there's your calcium iodide, and what part of this calcium, the calcium iodide, is just calcium? It's actually a lot simpler than you think. You know that any calcium iodide is going to be 13.61% calcium. So if you have 50 grams, all I need is that percent of that amount. So in other words, once I figured out the percent by mass, I could take 50 grams times its percent, 0 0.1361, and if I did that, I'm going to end up with 6.1. 805 grams. Okay, so one more question I want to show you. Let's go back to this one down here, this bottom one down here that a lot of people have a problem with. While on an exploratory mining excavation, we discovered two sites. First contains a large amount of iron 2 sulfide, FES, and then there was iron 2 oxide, Fe2S. Which ore should we excavate and why? Well, if you get the 2% by masses, here's what you do. The first thing you want to do is check to see what percent each is iron. So for Fe2O3, we're going to take two irons and put it over the whole compound. Each iron is 55.85, which is 111.7 grams per mole. And the three oxygens equals 3 times 16, which is 48 grams per mole. So that totals up to be 159.7 grams per mole. So the percent is the two irons, the 111.7 grams per mole over 159.7 grams per mole times 100. Here we go, part over the total, part over the total. And that's going to be 69.94%. Whereas if you do the iron sulfide, you've got FES. You want the iron over the iron sulfide. So that's going to be the iron is 55.85. The sulfur is 32.07. And we're going to get 87.92 grams per mole. That's the mass of the whole Fe2S. Now we're going to take the part, the iron, over the total, and we're going to have 55.85 over 87.92 times 100 to turn it into a fraction, and we're going to get 63.52%. So, which one should you mine? Well, if I'm mining something, I would rather mine something where I get 69.9% iron versus this, which only gives me 63.5% iron. So, for the same amount of stuff, I'm going to get more iron. That's why the answer is that amount right there. All right, so start working on your homework, uh, questions about grams and moles and percents, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.